Hey everybody, this one's called Fruits of a Democracy. They keep telling us we're in a democracy. And so, um, what's that cause? And I'd like to bring to your attention my uh, new uh, subscription channel that I have available on HowTube. Um, so, uh, I have a bunch of exclusive videos up there and also videos that I know that won't be allowed on YouTube because, um, you know, how they censor. And so, um, uh, I would suggest that uh, it's not very expensive. Um, and I would suggest you uh, go there. It's only $10 a month. And um, you can go there and watch the videos that are not available on YouTube. Uh, first of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. No, I'm in a liar. You should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I provided references to aid you in your research, but I don't know everything and I'm open to any ideas. There's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one of you do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. If the people don't know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? And that's so true. Most people have no idea. Never forget the men who started this country were marijuana growing, whiskey drinking, tax evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot the pigs. And that's true. That's exactly who they were. Think about it. George Washington was a hemp farmer. All tyranny needs to gain foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Government is not reason, it's not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. So, republic or democracy? Outside Independence Hall, when the Constitutional Convention of 1787 ended, Mrs. Powell of Philadelphia asked Benjamin Franklin, Well, doctor, what have we got, a republic or a monarchy? With no hesitation whatsoever, Franklin responded, A republic, if you can keep it. And was that ever providential, I guess you might say. Or very smart. I mean, he's smart enough to know that republics are not easy to keep. And uh, so that's the question, isn't it? Republic or democracy? See, a democracy, what's a democracy? You know, democracy is mob rule. And I think that we're seeing the fruits of mob rule all over the place these days. Democracy is mob rule. Democracy is the result of a military occupation. It's a popularity contest. Moral relativism is a pillar of Satanism, according to Mark Passio, a former Satanist priest. Moral relativism is what is right or wrong today is what we decide today and tomorrow it'll be something different. And that's exactly what the courts are all about. That's what everything is all about. Moral relativism. Passio says that 70 to 90% of Americans are practicing Satanists. I think he's right. You know, what does that say about the Christian religion that's supposed to be here? I would submit that most Christians have no idea what it means to be a Christian. I wonder how that's going to look on Judgment Day. We are all born ignorant, but one must work hard to remain stupid. <laughs> well said, Benjamin Franklin. When the southern states walked out of Congress in 1861, Congress ceased to have a quorum. Under executive authority, which is martial law, Lincoln ordered Congress to reconvene. When the Supreme Court ruled against something Lincoln did, he sent troops to the Supreme Court. And to this day, you go to the rules of the Supreme Court. Rule 45 says... All process of this court issues in the name of the President of the United States. There's no real separation of powers. Think about it. There is no real separation of powers. We're under a military dictatorship from Congress. A republic is the only form of government which is not eternally at open or secret war with the rights of mankind. When a state forms a constitution which is approved by Congress, it is a stop to deny its validity. The action of Congress cannot be inquired into, for the judicial is bound to follow the action of the political department. 
And uh, that's Luther versus Borden, 1849. So that's more than that. Think about it. So uh, it's political. So it's political about the money. It's political about all of that stuff. Really what it comes down to is it's District of Columbia. And we, the people, need to complain. We need to understand the law and complain and bring up the right issues, which is the purpose of this channel. And everything I'm doing is to help people to understand what the real issues are, what's really going on, uh, um, and using court cases and all sorts of stuff to support it. There's loads of court cases to support it. It's all District of Columbia. They're bringing the District of Columbia outside of a maximum of 10 miles square as required by Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Don't get me going. <laughs> Martial law supersedes and replaces common law. The War of Independence was fought over the denial of trial by jury. And this is taken from the cause of necessities for taking up arms, 1775. Statutes have been passed to extend the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law, and instead thereof, the publish and order the use and exercise of the law marshal. And for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter, we saw the misery to which thus despotism would reduce us. Despotism, that's dictatorship, folks. That's exactly what that is. And trial by jury, that's actually in the Constitution in Article 3. It's in the Seventh Amendment. It's in the, in the, um, the Northwest Ordinance. And yet, how many people get a trial by jury? I can guarantee you that there is not one trial by jury held anywhere in America. They're jury trials is what they are. Trial by jury means the jury conducts the trial. And people don't get it. All statutes, state or federal, passed prior to 1861 are lawful to sure statutes. All statutes, state or federal, passed after 1861 are martial law statutes. In 1871, Congress set up a corporation called the United States to operate as the government of the District of Columbia. And this is the dissenting opinion of Chief Ju of Justice Marshall Harlan in the case Downs versus Bidwell, 1901. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. So we have a lawful de jure government here, and nobody does have a clue. And, and we have a corporation that's set up that's nothing but a bunch of thieves and pirates. They're Roman cults, they're Satanists, it's bankrupt now, and it's owned and operated by the Roman cult. Don't get me going. So, so, and it's really supposed to only be in the District of Columbia, but what happens is they go and get you into their Commerce Clause, and they assault you with their, under because Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, gives Congress plenary, according to the Supreme Court, plenary, which means total jurisdiction over the Commerce Clause. The style of this Confederacy shall be the United States of America, that's found in the Articles of Confederation, Article 1. And yet, if you look in a passport, it says United States of America. Franklin said, a republic, if you can keep it. Do we have one? It's actually still here. But we the people are going, we don't have a clue. We're getting mixed up in these contracts and and sold into slavery and that's exactly what happens these pirates are going around assaulting people dragging them into their so-called courts and selling into slavery and making money at it too they make all sorts of money fake money it's all satanic passport defined Passport is a written document given to a person or persons by a commander of belligerent forces authorizing him or them to travel unmolested within the district occupied by his troops. Passports are issued by the State Department or other similar office in other countries. The diplomatic agents and others entering or traveling in foreign countries which are the same general character as those issued during war. The latter should, when practicable, have the photograph of the bearer attached. That's the Rules of Land Warfare, 1914 edition, Passport Safeguards, con uh, Safe Conduct, Safeguards, and Cartels. Chapter 7, Section 4, Article 276, Page 100. 
and there's a silver certificate. And the Federal Reserve notes have the same kind of thing, the United States of America. That's the only place that I've seen the United States of America, except also on land patents, okay? Land patents will also say the United States of America. There's three kinds of martial law. There's full martial law, where a declaration of martial law is issued, troops are put on the street, it's used only during wartime or used on a foreign country when actually invaded by a foreign power or put down an, or to put down an armed rebellion. There's martial law proper, the law of the armed forces, when a captain tells a private what to do, it's enforced by court martials. And there's martial law rule, the law of necessity and emergency. It allows the domestic use of martial law powers is used during times of peace. Why do you think the police wear military uniforms. It's because they're military police. Hello? And that's actually taken from Ex parte Milligan. I think that's the case where the Supreme Court, where, the, where Lincoln sent troops to the Supreme Court, but I don't know for sure. And that's quoted in Diet versus Turner and the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court. Everything done after 1861 was done under martial law, the law of necessity. All statutes, con constitutions, codes, rules, regulations, amendments are for the unconstitutional corporation that set up in 1871 for the District of Columbia. Damn, that's not spelt right, is it? There we go. In 1901, Congress passed a code of law for the District of Columbia at 31 Stat 1189. That's now called United States Code. It's kind of deceptive, isn't it? It's all about deception. So United States Code is actually code of law for the District of Columbia. I use that in my court cases all the time. And the Uniform Commercial Code under uh, Section 9-307, uh, par subparagraph 8, location of debtor, the United States is located in the District of Columbia. So this is all for the District of Columbia. They call it United States, but that's the District of Columbia. They don't want you to know what's going on. They're a bunch of liars and thieves. Oh, look at this. Judge works for the state, prosecutor works for the state, police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer where the plaintiff, the judge, the police, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police all represent the same party. And since no corpus delecti, mens rea or ex reas can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. It's because you're in commerce. You don't have access to common law. I don't know, though, some judges will actually say the Constitution doesn't apply in here, and I don't want to hear another word about it. But actually, the Constitution's the supreme law of the land under Article 6, Clause 2, and I don't care what your state codes say. Unless, of course, you intend to purge your rope. Civil law, Roman law, and Roman civil law are convertible phrases, meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law, to distinguish it from the law of nature and from international law. So, so remember, civil law, Roman law, and Roman civil law are all convertible phrases. Municipal law. That's because they're all corporations. And they fall under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3. The plenary authority of Congress. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Oh, look, a kangaroo court. The British, the bar is British accredited regency. A regent is someone who represents a sovereign that fails to be competent. You know, Anybody that hires a lawyer is an imbecile. I can show you in, the, in their own stuff. So an imbecile is not competent. Think about it. All bar members are here enforcing the martial law. Bar members equals martial law equals democracy. This is all the fruits of a democracy. Why do you think they're telling us you're in democracy? Regency. The officer jurisdiction of a regent or body of regents a government or authority by regents. 
region, a person who exercised the ruling power in a kingdom during the minority or absent or of the disability of the sovereign, a governor or ruler. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. All bar members operate in a zip code. All zip codes are in the District of Columbia. We, the people, have abdicated our responsibility to these bar members from the District of Columbia. We're under a military dictatorship. This is Article 1 of the Libra Code, which is also known as General Orders 100, which was written by a guy by the name of Francis Lieber for Lincoln in 1863. A place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law of the invading or occupying army. Whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. If you got troops out there, what do you think those military police are? That's martial law, folks. It's time to wake up. Martial law falls under the law of nations. This will work for any country on the planet because it falls under the law of nations. Find any national emergency, including a bankruptcy, and you'll have proof that your country is operating under martial law. And, and the Libra Code applies in any country on the planet because it's the law of nations. A republic is the only form of government which is not eternally at open or secret war with the rights of mankind. Thank you, Thomas Jefferson. Martial law is the public law of necessity. Necessity calls it force. Necessity justifies its exercise, and necessity measures the extent and degree to which it may be employed. Necessity is no formal, artificial, legalistic concept, but an actual and factual one. It is the necessity of taking action to safeguard the state against insurrection, riot, disorder, or public calamity. What constitutes necessity is a question of fact in each case, and that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, Page 3093, quoting Frederick B. Weiner, A Practical Manual of Martial Law, 1940. Necessity is the plea of every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of slay as the argument of tyrants. It's the creed of slaves. So tyrants say, oh yeah, we have to do this, and slaves are so stupid, oh yeah, we want to be your slave. What is proclaiming martial law is no law at all, uh, but for merely for the sake of public safety and circumstances of great emergency, setting aside all law and acting under military authority. That's true. Martial law is no law at all. That's why they have to pass millions of codes, rules, and regulations. That's Eight Attorney General's opinion, uh, February 3rd, 1857. That's why they have to pass statutes for common law offenses like murder and assault. That's why all statutes are edicts under martial law. We can't even begin to count the number of times judges, lawyers, and statesmen have said there isn't a common law anymore. It's been replaced by statutes. They'd be more truthful if they said there isn't a common law anymore. It's been replaced by martial law. But they don't want to tell you the truth. If you knew the truth, there'd be a revolt overnight. That's what caused the War of Independence. When you start bringing this stuff up, they're going to want to make you go away because... Because that's what caused the War of Independence. Think about it. What was in the cause of necessities for taking up arms that we just read a few minutes ago? There are no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command are crimes. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense under the same enactment, provide exceptions to, an applicate, to its application. Welcome to your democracy. All common law offenses and affirmative defenses are abolished. Arizona, no conduct or omission constitutes an offense or affirmative defense unless it's an offense or affirmative defense under this title or under another statute or ordinance. Arizona revised statutes. Every state has one like this. If once the people become inattentive to public affairs, you and I and Congress and assemblies, judges and governors shall all become wolves. It seems to be the law of our general nature in spite of individual exceptions. That's coming from Jefferson. 
We the people are asleep at the wheel. Why do you think they're stealing our children? Those are all curses that are found in Deuteronomy chapter 28 when we turn away from God. Military jurisdictions of two kinds. First, that which is confirmed and defined by statute. Second, that which is derived by the common law of war. Military offenses under the statute law must be tried in the manner they are directed, but military offenses which do not come under the statute must be tried and punished under the common law of war. All statutes are in support of the martial law. All statutes apply to subjects only. There's two kinds of court proceedings, court martials and military commissions. Why do you think they wear those black robes? That's a military uniform. The only Article Three courts are set up by we the people and the Supreme Court under some circumstances. But those are the only Article Three courts. Martial law does not cease during a hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the Commander-in-Chief or by special mention in a treaty of peace. That's Article 2 of the Libra Code. And I can tell you that there is no, in Texas case, there's no treaty of peace. Uh, there's been no proclamations, period, ending the martial law. In Arizona, there is a treaty of peace. It's called the Treaty of Hidalgo. But it doesn't say anything about ending the martial law. And it has to say that by special mention in the Treaty of Peace concluding the war. And so, so the martial law continues in Arizona. All the states, it's the same thing. They don't say anything about ending the martial law because they want their martial law. They want their dictatorship. But again, if you know the law, it doesn't have to affect you. Again, we the people need to be on top of it. We actually need to start forming our militias, okay? Not that we're going to get into a war with them, but if they know that we're armed, they're going to be a whole lot different than they are right now because they just walk all over us. Martial law in a hostile country consists in the suspension by the occupying military authority, the civil, criminal and civil law, and of the domestic administration and government of the, of the occupied place or territory, and in the substitution of military rule and force for the same, as well as the dictation. That's dictatorship, folks. As far as military necessity requires the suspension, substitution, or dictatorship, folks. Note, under law martial, the only criminal only the criminal jurisdiction of a military court is the recognized law, but as Article 3 sets the uh, says, the civil courts can continue wholly or in part as long as the civil jurisdiction does not violate the military orders laid down by the commander in chief or one of his commanders. By this means, a military venue jurisdiction and authority are imposed upon the occupied populace under the disguise of the ordinary civil courts and officers of the occupied district or region, because the so-called civil authorities in an occupied district or region only act at the pleasure of a military authority. It should also be noted here that the several state legislatures, county boards of commissioners, and city councils are constantly legislating to please the edicts of the federal government, the occupying force, and that their legislation in this sense is, is not the exercise of state sovereignty, but instead a compliance with the edicts of the military force, which occupies the several states, and are consequently our edicts of martial law rule. And that's taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court. A statute is an edict under martial law. Regulations an edict under martial law. Code is an edict under martial law. Rule is an edict under martial law. A constitution is an edict under martial law. And an amendment is an edict under martial law. A republic is the only form of government which is not eternally at open or secret war with the rights of mankind. All statutes, codes, rules, regulations... Constitutions are all edicts under martial law. Court rules, fees, everything. Fruits of a democracy. The National Security Agency takes care of the spying. The Central Intelligence Agency can take care of the drug trade. The Federal Bureau of Investigation takes care of the terror attacks and false flags. And Homeland Security takes care of the rest. 
It's all the fruits of a democracy, folks. The CIA owns every one of any significance in the major media. William Corm Colby, former CIA director, that was like in the 90s. We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. William Casey, CIA director, 1981. Deception is the state of mind and the mind of the state. James Angleton, head of CIA counterintelligence from 1954 to 1974. The action of Congress and the passage of the first Legal Tender Act was placed distinctly upon the ground of the existing imperative need of government, and the Legal Tender Clause was urged and adopted as a war measure. Martial law. Juilliard versus Greenman, U.R. Supreme Court, 1884. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to like this video. On YouTube, don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. On Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. And that's my uh, channel, the front page. Uh, the, the subscribe button's already clicked because otherwise it'd be red. The bell is not clicked. The arrow is pointing at the bell. It, once the bell gets clicked, it looks like it's vibrating. Democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the outcome of the vote. Benjamin Franklin. The refusal of King George III to allow the colonies to operate an honest money system, which freed the ordinary man from the clutches of the money manipulators, was probably the prime cause of the revolution. Remember... Democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and murders itself. There never was a democracy yet that did not commit suicide. Banks are international law. It's all international law. Military despotism is international law. Uniform commercial code is international law. All codes, rules, and regulations are international law. Gold is the money of kings. Silver is the money of gentlemen. Barter is the money of peasants. Debt is the money of slaves. And that's what a Federal Reserve note is. It's a security. And this, this gives them good faith. All one violence commanded against persons in the invaded country, all destruction of property not commanded by the authorized officer, all robbery, all pillage or sacking, even after the taking of place by main force, all rape, wounding, maiming, or killing of such inhabitants are prohibited under the penalty of death or such other severe punishment as may seem adequate for the gravity of the offense. A soldier, officer, or private in the act of committing such violence and disobeying a superior ordering him to abstain from it may be lawfully killed on the spot by such superior. So they get to do it once. Okay, what do you think is going on? They get to do it once and get away with it. Oh, gee, I'm so sorry. They presume you're one of the slaves. This is Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. No evidence obtained by an officer or other person in violation of any provision of the constitutional laws of the state of Texas or the constitutional laws of the United States of America shall be admitted in evidence against the accused on the trial of any criminal case. It is an exception to the provisions of subsection A of this article that the evidence was obtained by a pig acting in objective good faith relying upon a warrant issued by another pig based on probable cause. They're all pigs. And this is a federal one, 18 U.S.C. Section 2707. A good faith reliance on a court warrant or order, a grand jury subpoena, a legislative authorization or a statutory authorization, including a request of a governmental entity under Section 2703F of this title, a request of an investigating or a law enforcement officer under Section 2518.7 of this title, or a good faith determination that Section 2511.3 of this title permit, permitted the conduct complained of is a complete defense to any civil or criminal action brought under this chapter or any other law. That's why I like, that's 18 U.S.C. section 2707. That's why I like war crimes, because even if they get their hired thugs off the hook, their criminal corporation still responsible. But, but you still got to get those bail priests to go along with it. They're nothing but a bunch of Satanists and thieves. We, the people, need to get off our backside. 
All statutes, codes, rules, regulations, and constitutions are edicts under martial law. Every constitutional amendment after 1861 is an edict under martial law. That's the 14th Amendment. The current 13th Amendment, 14th Amendment, all of them after that. Military necessity is martial law. It's a fabulous fact that the federal United States federal government's been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent, HJR 192, 73rd Congress, in session June 5, 1933, joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and as further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. That's Congressional Record, March 17, 1993. You think it's changed? Absolutely not. Oh, look at this. That's March 9th, 1933. March 9th, 1933. It's the same day. Since March 9th, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. Under the powers delegated by these statutes, the president may seize property, organize and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control all transportation and communication, regulate the operation of private enterprise, restrict travel in a plethora of particular ways, control the lives of all American citizens. A majority of the people of the United States have lived all their lives under emergency rule. For 40 years, freedoms of governmental procedures guaranteed by the Constitution have in varying degrees been abridged by laws brought into force by states of national emergency. And that's in rig U.S. Senate Report number 93-549, dated November 19, 1973. You can Google that and get it if you want it. The dissenting opinion asserts that the 14th Amendment is a part of the Constitution of the United States. While this same assertion has been made by the U.S. Supreme Court, that never that court has never held that the amendment was legally adopted. I cannot believe that any court in full possessions of its faculties could honestly hold that the amendment was properly approved and adopted. And that's State versus Phillips. But think about it. What was that first case that we talked about? I think it was, um, oh... Where, where the action of Congress cannot be disputed by the courts. That was, um, oh, I'll think of it here in a minute. Anyways, of course, we could go there. That's 63. It's one of the first, one of the first cases we looked at. There we go. When a state forms a constitution, Luther versus Borden which is approved by Congress, it's a stop to deny its validity. The action of Congress cannot be required into for the judicial is found to follow the action of the political department. It's a political issue. They're not going to dispute it. Oh, here it is here again. <laughs> When a state forms a constitution which is approved by Congress, it's a stop to deny the validity. The action of Congress cannot be inquired into for the judicial is bound to follow the political, follow the action of the political department. That's why they'll not overturn the 14th Amendment, the 16th Amendment, or get involved in politics. Even money. It's all political. And the people are too stupid to figure it out. Never trust a government that doesn't trust its own citizens with guns. Well said Benjamin Franklin. Why does the government want to ban semi-automatic rifles? Because they know you won't get into boxcars willingly. China established gun control in 1935. From 1948 to 1952, 20 million political dissidents unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. Hello? You don't think that's coming? The pimp claims you're not Christian if you own a gun. Well, I meant the Pope. No, I meant the pimp. <laughs> He's a liar. He's the one that's not Christian. He's a Satanist. He's wearing all that white, making himself look like he's holier than thou. He should be wearing black because he's Satan himself on this planet. Satan's agent. My new Trump book is now available. 
Trump a true American or pay, uh, or um, um, true uh, American patriot or not? The uh, this is the back of the book. Um, I didn't write this, but the publisher wrote it. Um, actually, Mike Blackwell asked me to write the book, and he published it. But he hired a company to um, to help us with it, and and they wrote this. And so, um, but I think they nail it pretty good. It says in Trump, a true American patriot or not, Glenn Fern and Mike Blackwell um, reveal the depths of corruption, deceit, manipulation, and infesting our political system for hundreds of years, regardless of political affiliation. Read the hard evidence that exposes how our elected officials sold Americans into slavery. Understand the founding fathers' true intent when they formed our Republican form of government. Discover the influence of the satanic Roman cult on our pol politicians and political system. Does Trump want to transfer power back to we the people? And Trump, you will see the great battle that is upon us. And, and that nails it. I mean, you see it happening every day. Trump is... Uh, as what a true patriot, in my opinion. So we'll see. You can order the book from Amazon or from my website. It's $40 plus shipping. If you prefer to order the book from my website, or I prefer you order the book from my website, Amazon does not provide autographed books. If you want the book autographed, you're going to have to order from my website. And don't forget to let me know that you want the autograph to say if you have something in particular. So do you want to know the origins of the deep state and who's behind it? It's in the book. Do you want to know why it's called the Trump administration or the Biden administration? It's in the book. Do you want to know what an administration is? Do you want to know how Trump came to be president? Did you know he was invited by the military? He was. Do you want to know who owns Congress? Do you want to know why Pelosi will get up there or did get up there and say we can't read this bill until after we pass it? because the owners are telling her. You want to know why they're called law enforcement officers? Because they're enforcing the military occupation. You want to know how you have become a slave. You want to know what the root cause of the War of Independence was. It's the same thing that's going on right now. Do you want to know why every president goes to visit the pimp? Well, I meant the Pope. No, I meant the pimp. On their first international trip, they did. They do and they did. So Mike Blackwell asked me to write the book. Um, as far as Jerome Corsi is concerned, he's a guy that lives in the Northeast. He's written a bunch of books. He's got a website, a YouTube channel. Anyways, there's a YouTube video that says that he was visited in 2015 by five generals, and they said that there was a group of generals in the Pentagon that were going to overthrow Obama. And he said, well, you can do that if you want, but you might want to go talk to Donald Trump first. Three months later, he gets a phone call. They decided not to overthrow Obama because Donald Trump had agreed to run for president. So Trump was invited. And um, it's 95. What happened is what Mike Blackwell asked me to write the book. It took me about six weeks because all I did is I took a lawsuit and manipulated it and turned it into the book. So it's 95% or more provable facts. There's a little bit of opinion, but it's 95% provable facts. I use law, uh, lawsuit, court cases, international treaties, all sorts of stuff like that, law, di law dictionary definitions to prove everything that's in it. And then Howard Hughes. Well, we'll talk about him with David Wilcock. But Trump, okay, um, I think, well, Howard Hughes and Trump, um, I think all these billionaires get approached by the New World Order crowd, this is my opinion, and get told that they're going to go along with the program or they're going to turn up dead. And I think I think that, and I know that was happened to Howard Hughes after what David Wilcox said, but uh, with Trump, um, I think he was approached because there was a helicopter crash in 1984, and he was supposed to have been on that flight and canceled out at the last minute. And uh, three of his executives got killed. And and I happen to know a little bit about helicopters because I do aerospace engineering consulting. I started out in 1976 working on helicopters as a mechanic. And so I happen to know a little bit about helicopters. And this helicopter crashed for a reason that I've never ever heard of a helicopter crashing. The blades came off. I've never heard of that happening. I mean, helicopters crash for a lot of reasons, but never heard of that. 
And um, so I suspect some foul play, quite frankly. Anyways, David Wilcock is a guy that's got a YouTube channel called, uh, what is it called? Divine Cosmos. And, um, and, and, and a website. I think he's got a website with the same name. Anyways, he says that after World War II, Howard Hughes got blackballed. We all know Howard Hughes is a big industrialist, and he was he built the Spruce Goose, and that thing is still sitting in Long Beach Harbor to this day. Anyways, he uh, I think it's there. Anyways, Howard Hughes got blackballed and couldn't get any defense contracts. Remember, Eisenhower said, beware of the military-industrial complex. And uh, Howard Hughes got blackballed, couldn't get any contracts, and so he got some women to go and sleep with the military-industrial complex types to find out from Pillow Talk, what was going on? And that's when he found out that they were planning on doing what they're doing right now. They wanted to kill off 90% of us and and create a global plantation, them as the as a dictatorship, which is certainly happening right now, folks. Time to wake up. Anyways, um, Howard Hughes decided that he had a manual published, he had instructions, he had all sorts of stuff, a set of manuals put in place, and Kennedy was actually implementing it. And um, and when they killed him, and they killed his brother, and they killed a bunch of people at that time. And so so I think Howard Hughes was hiding out. Remember how he was hiding out all the time? I think he was hiding out because he was afraid for his life. He figured they were after him. They probably were. In reality, they're not after me. They're after you. I'm just in the way. Thank you, Donald Trump. He is brilliant, I tell you. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep going here. The U.S. Constitution doesn't guarantee happiness, only pursuit of it. <laughs> you have to catch up with it yourself. That's true. Copies of these documents can be found on my website and linked under my recent videos. Now, uh, the PowerPoint presentation from this video will ultimately be in my free file section on my website. But in the meanwhile, a link to it will be in the show notes of this video. So, uh, and it's in all of my videos. If it's not on my website, it'll be in the show notes on the video, a link to it, okay? I upload it to Google Docs and put a link to it in the videos, and you can download it and have it for yourself. If you have, I know some of the videos are hard to read, um, and so you can download the PowerPoint presentation and watch the PowerPoint presentation and listen to the video. That's pretty easy, and so um, um, you can do that. Anyways, um, for a complete set of YouTube videos with private information, shares a DVD with over 100 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forums, contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the porcelain loans, the military script, the fake money, the Federal Reserve notes, the checks, the money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. So you have two political jurisdictions. You have God's jurisdiction, which is the real world, and Lucifer's, which is the fiction. So think about it. Necromancy, you're bringing dead things to life. They're all Satanists. And so, so we have to understand that this is all satanic that's going on. We've got to walk away from it. That's the only thing we can really do is just refuse to participate. Martial law affects chiefly the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes, whether imposed by the expelled government or by the invader. It refers mainly to the support and efficiency of the army, its safety, and the safety of its operations. That's Article 10 of the Libra Code. That's now they now you know why they always want you to be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Pentagon Inc. Masquerading as private companies. Google wants to get sued. They really do. They're gonna. They're 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 picking a fight with the wrong guy. All police are military police, FBI military police, city military police, state military police, homeland security military police, county military police. If they're talking to you, then you're a subject and you're the enemy. You gotta understand that. You gotta treat it that way. If they're talking to you, you are the enemy. The real domestic terrorists, right there, right there. 
real domestic terrorists. On our international law of warfare, all parties to a cause must appear by nom de guerre because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during the war in his own name. A mixed war is one made on one side by public authority, the other by mere private persons. It's what's happening. All court cases are warfare. Murdered by police. This is all the benefits of democracy, folks. Aren't you so glad you've got a democracy? We've got a democracy here. This rule does not interfere with the right of the victorious invader to tax the people or their property to levy forced loans. To billet soldiers or to appropriate property, especially houses, land, boats, or ships, or churches, for temporary military uses. Article 37, Libra Code. The forced loans of 1862 and 1863 in the form of legal tender notes were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. They formed a part of the public debt of the United States. U.S. Supreme Court, Juilliard versus Greenman. Federal Reserve notes are military script. Federal Reserve notes are forced loans. They're forcing you, the enemy, to loan the government money. Federal Reserve notes are securities. Uh, we talked about it, and after investigating it ourselves, we decided we're not guilty. Governments descend to the level of mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where private corporate commercial paper and securities is concerned. For purposes of suit, such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. Governments lose their immunity and descend to the level of private corporations when involved in commercial activity, enforcing negotiable instruments, as in fines, penalties, assessments, bails, taxes. The remedy lies at the hands of the state and its municipalities seeking remedy. Federal Reserve notes is military script. Okay? It's all, that's, that's, they lose immunity. So you have to understand that, and, and, uh, and it's not the government. We, the people, need to form our militias. We, need, the people, need to build a case against them. That's what I do, is I file criminal complaints. I don't pay their fines. I file criminal complaints and let the FBI go over there and educate them. They're bringing the District of Columbia outside a 10-mile square. They're assaulting me with their commerce clause. Where's the evidence that I'm involved in, in a commercial mm -hmm. transaction? Matter of fact, what I do is I challenge the standing. Prove your standing to talk to a man, and they'll never do it. They have yet to prove standing or even try to prove it. It's a corporation. No corporation has standing to say anything to any man. And 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 then what happens is I use that for my criminal complaints. Matter of fact, I just had the mayor Bedford resign because I was filing attempted murder charges against his ass and the entire city council and the chief of police, the judge, the prosecutor, everybody and their brother. Don't get me going. You're going to get me going here. Beware of violent street gangs, typical gang member, well-organized, gang colors, gang identifier, heavily armed, do not approach gang members, are extreme, are aggressive and notoriously violent. All statutes are martial law statutes. All statutes apply to subjects only. Welcome to a democracy. The last thing they want to talk about is war crimes. War crimes precipitate revolutions. Martial law precipitated the war of independence. Martial law creates a democracy, which is mob rule. They have no problem telling you about the democracy. They'll never admit that it's a military dictatorship. The tyrant, who in order to hold his power, suppress every superiority, does away with good men, forbids education and light, controls every movement of the citizens, and keeping them under perpetual servitude, wants them to grow accustomed to baseness, cowardice, has his spies everywhere to listen to what is said in meetings, spreads dissension and calumny among the citizens, impoverishes them, is obliged to make war and keep in, in order to keep his uh, subjects occupied and impose upon them a permanent need of a chief. And Aristotle, okay, that's like, what, 2,000 years ago? The more they change, the more they stay the same. Biden is a textbook tyrant. Obama was a textbook tyrant. Bush, both Bushes were textbook tyrants. Clinton, they're all tyrants. 
I have exclusive content available on HowTube.com. The uh, ba- this is only one subscription. It's nine 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 month for the videos plus unlimited email consulta- consultations. But I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in an attorney. No, I'm in a liar. But I can tell you what I would do and where to find the forms. What I would do under certain circumstances. The only power that the New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception, and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit. I cannot fight all the battles. I'm currently publishing two videos a week to YouTube, and um, and and I'll keep doing it as long as they don't take my channel down, but I have to publish. Some of them are going to HowTube, and... Um, and, and there's also going to be some, I, I just ha- published one about uh, how to do a challenge to standing and, and the proper procedure. And, uh, and I'm also going to be doing some on uh, petitions for writ of mandamus. Now, every state's going to be different for that. I can tell you, I'm going to do one for Texas. I'm going to do one for New York. I'm going to do one for Nevada so far. Those are ones that I've helped people with. And so I've got that down. But but the bottom line is, is that as I do them, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll upload them. And so what you do is a challenge to standing. Now, sometimes it works. Sometimes they just go away and you never hear from them again. But if it doesn't, then all you do is a petition for writ of mandamus to the Court of Appeals or wherever the appropriate court in your state is. And, and you ask the court. A mandamus is where you ask the, the court to order some bureaucrat to do what he's supposed to do. Okay, that's what a mandamus is for. And so you ask the court to order them to prove standing in jurisdiction. That's what they're supposed to do. And um, and then the court, what they'll do is they'll dismiss it for lack of jurisdiction, and they'll notify the lower court, and your problem will go away. Anyways, uh, that's if you got a bu- you built your case good. Okay, the challenge to standings uh, is is part of it. Okay, but there's other things you can do too. Um, anyways, challenge jurisdiction. Okay, definitely, anytime, always challenge jurisdiction. You don't have to be on point. They always deny due process. When they deny due process, they lose subject matter jurisdiction, and subject matter jurisdiction can be challenged even on appeal. So they and they always do. I haven't seen a case yet where they didn't deny juris deny due process. They always deny due process. They're nothing but a bunch of thieves and pirates. Don't get me going. Some of my exclusive content, Arlington Private Information Chair, Land D Training and Stopple Certificates Training, Foreclosure Stopple Certificates Training, Corporate Denial Training, Toll Roads Notice and Demand Training, Invoice Training, Notice of Void Judgment Training, Revocation of Signature Training, Third Party Witness Training, Federal Habeas Corpus Training, Revocation of Voter Registration, Criminal complaint training, lawsuit training, other training, any requests, depending on if it's something I haven't already done or something that I can do, okay? I, I've got one on lawsuit training, and there's going to be more, but it's going to take time, okay? Because lawsuits are very complicated and take a lot of time and effort. And they really can use up a lot of your time and effort. Anyways, there's also Northeast Private Information Share videos. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free on my website and linked below my recent videos. There's a free files link on my website, and that's where you'll find PDFs of almost all of my videos. All of my videos, these PowerPoint presentations, I turn it into a PDF file, and then I, I, I either I'll put it below the video in the uh, in the show notes, or I'll, or I'll, uh, uh, eventually it'll get uploaded to my website. But you know, my web my webmaster, I don't put a lot of work on him because he helps me out a lot, and so I don't w- want to give him that much stuff to do. So I'll, what I'll do is is I'll give him a bunch of things to upload. Uh, all at once when I do it. And so, um, anyways, that's the way it works. All exclusive content available on HowTube.com, and you can buy a subscription there, and it's HowTube Sovereignty International. All empires are built the same way. You get 50% of the poor to go to war with and kill the other 50% of the poor, leaving the rich to chit-chat in the Senate. Gives the impression that there's real democracy. Welcome to democracy, folks! Uh, you absorb the land and riches of your enemies and repeat whenever you need cash or new resources. That's right. War is terrorism with a bigger budget. 
yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven out of all their former holes, they devised a new method of conveyance um, by which lands were granted not to themselves directly, but the nominal fee of fees to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use. Okay, use means use you fruct. And receiving the actual profits while the season of the land remained in the nominal fee of fee, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy. That's the Roman cult, folks. You know, think about it. They get to sit there and decide whether they're doing it right or not. How convenient! To be bound and conscious to account to assess K use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes, folks. These bell priests get to sit there and decide whether they're doing it right or not. And, uh, and, they, and they get to decide whether you owe the taxes or not. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. That's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume two, under the definition of Mort Main. Democracy, fake laws, false arrest, feel free. Welcome to democracy, folks. My contact information is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page, uh, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. Quite frankly, I haven't been to Facebook in months or even years. Um, that, that's, that's all military industrial complex. They're collecting information about you. So why would you go there? Uh, my private group on Facebook is being deleted. I haven't been there. I've got some people there. You know, I don't really care. I should, I would delete the thing, except I'd have to go through and ban all the people off the group because otherwise Facebook's going to be making money off it. Um, I got a, a private freebliss.org private group called Administering Your Public Servants, and I've got a Google private group called Administering Your Public Servants. Follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International, my HowTube uh, channel, Sovereignty International, and I've also got something on Rumble. Although Rumble is, you know, it's really hard to upload. I haven't been able to uh, figure out how to do that right. And, and so I do live streams there, and, and that's worked okay until recently, but uh, uploading videos, it always comes and it gets an error. Can you spot the terrorists? Terrorism is the use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims. Can you spot the terrorists? I see a whole bunch of them right there. Pull over. Your tail light's out. Terrorism, a system of government that seeks to rule by intimidation. Americans killed in 2015 by cannabis, zero. Ebola, one. Snake bites, two. ISIS, three. Playing football, 12. Cow attack, 20. <laughs> Can you believe it? Cow attack. Uh, bee sting, 100. Police, 1,100. Big Pharma, 100,000 plus. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist. This is all on YouTube. Bankrupt corporate so-called governments, bar members, one through eight. Do it yourself, how not to volunteer for the selective service and the draft. Martial laws here. Do it yourself, no income tax. Do it yourself, free mail. Do it yourself, kangaroo courts, one through 24. Canada Border Pigs Playlist, bar members and their satanic connections playlist. Warning. This is the army you were told not to tolerate. Hello? Lights are on. Is anybody home? Order followers, the servants of evil. These are all order followers right there. Those are order followers. They're servants of evil. You assist an evil system most effectively by obeying its decrees. An evil system never deserves such allegiance. Allegiance means uh, to it means partaking of the evil. A good person will resist an evil system with his or her whole soul. Are you really good? I don't know. I hope you are. Order followers are ones that keep the system of slavery in place. Mark Passio, former Satanist priest. 
just following orders. I was just following orders is never a valid excuse or justification for immoral criminal behavior. And this lame attempt to abdicate personal responsibility should never be accepted as a valid excuse for such behavior. Look at all the order followers there and look at all the obedient citizens, all the obedient citizens there and the order followers pillaging all their property. They won't be needing it. Fake money allows for bribery. Fake money allows for market manipulations. Fake money allows people like George Soros to buy politicians and buy elections. Fake money allows for corruption of all kinds. Fake money will allow for the pillaging of everybody with bank bail-ins. This is all the fruits of democracy, folks. Fake money and democracy go together. Every great injustice has been at the hands of someone just following orders. You know, the Nazis in the World War II, they had war crimes trials, and they all said, well, we were just following orders, and they got their necks stretched. They all suffered death by hanging, although what the, the few that didn't spent the rest of their life in jail. Oh, look at all the law-abiding citizens there, and the brave soldiers just doing their job. He, the prisoner, has as a consequence of his crime, only forfeit, not only forfeited his liberty, but all his personal rights is except those which the law and its humanity affords him. He is for the time being a slave of the state. When your government has all the guns, see where you is? And remember, there's a pit there behind, so they don't even bother. They just fall over dead behind them and then bulldoze it over. Capitus diminutio is the destruction or the caput of legal personality. Capitus diminutio. Okay, so this is Roman law, folks. At common law, status means nothing. At Roman law, status means everything. Capitus diminutio, so to speak, wipes out the former individual, puts a new one in his place. And between the old and the new individual, there is, legally speaking, nothing in common. A juristic personality may be thus destroyed in one of three ways. By the loss of status libertatis, that is capitus diminutio maxima. By the loss of status civitatis, that's capitus diminutio media. And uh, by severance from the agnatic family, this entails capitus diminutio minima. And this is taken from uh, Rudolf Sohm, the Institutes, a textbook of the history and system of Roman private law. And this is also um, capitus diminutio maxima, the diminution of a person's legal status as a result of being reduced to slavery. Roman law, Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. The two-party system is the politically correct term for dictatorship. Welcome to democracy, folks. If a man be found stealing any of those brethren of the children of Israel, maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you. If we were Christians, these people would be put to death. Are we Christians? That's the question, isn't it? A republic is the only form of government which is not eternally at open or secret war with the rights of mankind. The words penal and penalty in their strict primary sense denote a punishment, whether corporal or pecuniary, imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense against its laws. The noun penalty is defined forfeiture to be forfeited for non-compliance with an agreement. Gee, that sounds like Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3. Commercial. Commerce Clause. The words forfeit, penalty are substantially synonymous. So they're assaulting you with one of their contracts. It's a corporation. That's why the chalice of standing works so good, because they'll never answer it. It's all corporate. We now live in a nation where doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the press destroys information, religious, religion destroys morals, and our banks destroy the economy. Well said. Pecuniary cause, such as a rise. Okay, so this back here is penal as in Texas K-1. 
Penal Code? Texas Penal Code, where they put you in jail? Did you know that Texas has a bigger percentage of the people in prison as a percentage of the population than even the worst dictatorship on the planet than the Soviet Union or Communist China? Anyways, let's keep going here. Pecuniary cause. See, that has to do with penal. Think about it. Matter of fact, it talks about it back here. Whether corporal or pecuniary. Pecuniary cause, such as arise either from the withholding of ecclesiastical duties or the doing or the neglecting some act relating to the church. That's the pimp. Well, I guess it's the church. Well, that includes the pimp. Whereby some damage accrues to the plaintiff towards obtaining satisfaction for which he's permitted to institute a suit in the spiritual court. Such, for instance, are the subtracting and withholding of ties. That's, yeah, right. So we need our ties, and if you don't do it, we're going to put you in jail. For the parson or vicar, the non payment of ecclesiastical dues to the clergy. Why do you think people were leaving Europe in droves? It's because of this crap. The non-payment of ecclesiastical dues to the clergy is pensions, mortuaries, compositions, and the like. And this is uh, Holt House, A New Law Dictionary, 1850. And they're citing Book 3 on Blackstone's Commentaries on the Laws of England. Penitentiary has been a penitent, an ordainer of penance, penances, a place for penitence. Penitentiary. Anderson Law Dictionary. Penance is a punishment imposed for a crime by the ecclesiastical laws. It's an acknowledgement of the offense. Penance may be changed into a sum of money to be applied to pious uses. Okay, that's usufruct, uses, called commuting. Trump commuted Roger Stone's sentence. Remember that? He bought it off. If you think this is for your protection, you clearly have no idea what's going on. Within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. Nothing can stand against the church. And that's Roman Catholic Archbishop James E. Quigley, Chicago Daily Tribune, May 5th, 1903. There's two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by sword and the other by debt. The corporation set up in 1871 by Congress for the District of Columbia called United States is now bankrupt and it was seized by the creditors and is now owned and operated by the Roman cult. The Roman cult is satanic. And they lie, cheat, engage in routine fraud and deception everywhere they can. Ye of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's John 8 and 44. But the fearful and the unbelieving and a bumble and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part which in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And that's Revelations 21 and 8. The war is not meant to be won. It's meant to be continuous. Welcome to democracy, folks. Roman law, civil law, Roman civil law, and municipal law are convertible phrases. Roman law comes from the Roman cult. The prison industry comes from the Roman cult. Martial law comes from the Roman cult. Democracy comes from the Roman cult. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Be safe. Be safe. The Roman cult is satanic. Roman law, civil law, Roman civil law, municipal law are all satanic. The prison industry is satanic. Martial law is satanic. Democracy is satanic. Fake money are satanic. You are the enemy. All warfare is a satanic blood vice to the Roman cult god Baal. And the best defense is a good offense. War is when your government tells you who the enemy is. Revolution is when you figure it out for yourself. 
When liberty and freedom are at stake, your silence isn't golden, it's yellow. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Because the grand juries and institutions separate from the courts over those functioning, over whose functioning the courts do not preside, we think it clear that as a general matter, at least no such supervisory judicial authority exists. That's the Supreme Court. That's actually, um, what's his name? Scalia. Scalia wrote that decision. Rooted in long centuries of Anglo-American history, um, the grand jury is mentioned in the Bill of Rights, but not in the body of the Constitution. It has not been textually assigned, therefore, to any of the branches described in the first three articles. It is a constitutional fixture in its own right. And that's, again, uh, U.S. versus Williams, that's Scalia that's writing that. In fact, the whole theory of its function is that it belongs to no branch of the institutional government serving as a kind of buffer or a referee between the government and the people. Same case. Recognizing this tradition of independence, we've said that the Fifth Amendment's constitutional guarantee presupposes an investigative body acting independently of either prosecuting, attorney, or judge. So, there's a guy by the name of Cliff High. And um, he um, is a computer nerd. He was hired by Microsoft in the 90s. To, he, they flew him all over the world to put out their fires for him. He writes computer code. He discovered back in the 90s that we're all psychic, but we don't know it. Uh, but it comes out in how we use our words. So he developed a web bot to scrape the Internet, looking for changes in how we use our words. And he, he predicted 911 about six weeks before it happened, I think. And someone saw that and made some investments and made a bunch of money. Anyways, um, his data sets, he's been saying, he's been predicting the stuff that's happening right now. Now, sometimes his timing is off, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that, that uh, the prediction was, was wrong because they've been happening. And he says that right now we're in what he saw back in the late 90s and early 2000s as the he calls it the big ugly okay where things are going to get really really bad okay and so um you have to understand this that we're in the middle of a where this is the fruits of democracy there's going to be uh, all sorts of things happening and um um you have to watch some of his videos and you can come to your own conclusion about it uh, but anyways this is all fruits of a democracy, okay? And uh, democracy is mob rule. And what happens when a democracy breaks down in chaos? You get people rioting in the streets. You get all sorts of stuff. He says that some of these New World Order crowd, there's, they're going to turn up dead. There's going to be assassinations. There's going to be, um, there's going to be, you know, like somebody's yacht's going to blow up. Um, there's going to be... Uh, um, like he said, he saw in, in his data set somewhere where there's a crowd of people and some guy says, hey, there's Bill Gates and pulls out a gun and starts shooting. And so, um, you know, I don't know how that's going to happen or the circumstances around it or anything. But that's just stuff that I'm repeating of what, what he's the kind of stuff that is going to happen. OK, I don't know anything about it. But um, so anyways, um, we're all done now. Talk to you later. Thanks much.